Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. This is the Wix Online meeting number 95 at the end of uh, January. It's really kind of cool. We're getting close to 100, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. My, how time flies. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be with us right here, right now. Uh, let's get into it. The agenda. We'll talk about Wix 310 too because... It's a security releases, and security releases are the gifts that keep giving. Uh, we'll do that. We'll have some discussion. Then we'll do triage, and then we'll do a pull request review. Um, I think it will all make sense. And then we'll do questions, comments for other things if you're not completely consumed by the security update, which it feels like everything is consumed by the security update. So the security update was released on January 20th. Thank you, uh, Phil, for testing it significantly. Um, and missing the same bug that we missed, um, but uh, life is hard. So it went out uh, January 20th. It generally has worked pretty well. Um, we got one complaint about the setup XE not being able to be used anymore, which was, I guess, not that surprising. What was more surprising were the other issues we found. First, WinForms BA don't work because GEI doesn't like something that happens when we do the set default DLL directories. Um, and Those GDI plus, right? Sorry, GDI plus. Did I say GDI again? Yeah. Um, GDI plus. <laughs> GDI works fine. GDI plus has some issue having to do with fonts when it has the set DLL directory set, which doesn't make any sense. Um, but there's a connect issue open. Um, and we're hoping to hear back uh, something. It actually went to the CLR team, and now I understand that they're talking to the Windows team because it actually is in GDI Plus, not in WinForms itself. So uh, there's work to be done there. Um, the other problem is that the default layout switch goes to the wrong location. Um, if you give it a path, it will go to the right place. But if you do a slash layout, by itself, it'll end up in the clean room, which of course is not terribly useful for people finding it. Um, fortunately, Jacob found it and fixed it um, all within the span of a day or two this last week. So we'll look at that pull request now. Um, and we'll have a fix, and yay, that's in a space we control. So while it's disappointing we missed it, it's not like we're stuck trying to figure out what to do, unlike the WinForms issue. Um, the WinForms issue basically turns into, yeah, don't use WinForms right now, which is pretty painful. Um, uh, and and the layout switch, as Jacob points out, works as if you give it a path. Um, right, and if you give it a path to the build and bundle location, it'll fail. Yeah, that makes sense. If, but if you give layout a path anywhere else, at least it can still work. So there's a workaround for that one. WinForms, we don't have a workaround yet. Um, so... The question is, do we release a 3.10.3, or um, do we just roll on with 3.11 and let people go there if they need these fixes for things? Well, you say these fixes, plural, but we don't oh, have sorry. a fix for yeah, WinForms. We, we don't have a fix for WinForms, but, and we don't have an analysis yet, um, but I'm... I'm I'm pushing on people, so I'm I'm hoping we can get um, something, some status. Yeah. So I guess I'm showing my hand a little bit there. I'm inclined to, if we choose to do a 3.10.3, to hold it until we get a bit more information on the GDI plus thing. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather not do a 3.10.4 if we figure out with you know the help of whoever at Microsoft how to work around this GDI plus problem. Um, I would really like to get a fix in there for that because when, you know, managed BA is pretty common. WinForms apparently more common than WPF. Um, and I just, I hate the idea that we'd have to turn around and do a 3104 to, you know, make that happen again. Yeah. And also we have the, a workaround for the slash layout switch. I mean, it's not as great. You know, it is a breaking change, so we can fix it. But at yeah. least you can be successful with it by specifying some directory not where the XE is. So that's a, at least a... Um, yeah, I, I would... See, I would do a 3.10.3 to fix layout 
and if it were the only bug that we knew about, um, I would I would say we should do it. But because we know about the WinForms bug, I'm hesitant to to just ship a fix for layout. Yeah. Yeah. The alternative is that we say the WinForms problem is is you know it requires a fix in well apparently it requires a fix in Windows, which just seems like it's never going to be something we can you know we can ship. I'm hoping for a workaround. Like I'm I'm holding out hope that they're going to say, oh, yeah, do this, and right. it will work when you call set DLL directories. Like, right. add this user to this, add this, sorry, add this path to the user search path or something like that, which we can do um, if it's a safe and secure place that we can find. Right. Um, you know, that's my hope. Um, which is why I'm saying, yeah, I agree. I think we should we should wait until we know what's happening with that. Uh, before we we push out a three ten three, because I think this is serious enough that I would then have to consider that we need a three ten four, and I just I really don't want to do that. These releases are are kind of painful. I mean, they take a lot of effort, especially on the two of us, and yeah. you know that's time we could be spending doing other things. Yeah. So I don't want to I don't want to try to spin multiple point releases like this. No, I don't either. I don't really want to spend a lot of time on this beyond the fact that we did. So, all right. So the upside. Let's let's. I'm going to stick a positive light on this because I really, really want to have something positive to say here. We're at least we're secure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So far, that has pr held up pretty well. Um, the problem, of course, is if your wind forms are kind of trapped. But um, you're you're not in a great place with wind forms. But at least you can get to a good place where if we didn't have a fix for this, you would not be fit, uh, you would be in a really bad place. Also, Phil mentioned that um, you can work around the layout problem in your BA if you wanted to, because a BA can always set the um, layout directory uh, variable and put it somewhere. You can't put it exactly in the location with the XE, but you can. Um, at least do something useful. So at least the BA, again, can work around the layout issue. Um, you're kind of stuck right now with the uh, uh, wind forms issue, though. So right. so I'm inclined to hold for that. I don't see anybody really saying, no, 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 we must, we must get this out, get the layout fix out. Um, but I think everybody really wants to keep pushing on the... Um, WinForms DDI I think. Ah, John, it's good to have you back and having some feedback. Very much appreciated. All right, so we'll hold. That unfortunately means we don't exactly know when, um, but I will make sure that we have a bullet point in every agenda, even if I don't put it in the meeting notes because I get tired of typing it. But um, we will have a bullet point to continually come back to say what is the status of the WinForms GDI thing, which I expect for, well, until Microsoft gets back to us, it will be, there is no news. Uh, we have pinged them. So I guess we're going to be pinging them each week at least to try to, to make progress on this one forms GDI thing. My hope um, is that this is measured in a small number of weeks. Oh, gosh, I hope so. Um, we'll see. Um, Something else to point out, the GDI plus failure is a GDI plus failure. It's not a WinForms failure, but it's only, we use GDI plus in burn for some things, but it's only if you do something with fonts. And I don't know what WinForms is doing, but they're doing something with fonts. And we don't tend to do anything with fonts with GDI plus. We just use GDI for the plain old boring font stuff. So that's why most of the burn and Wix standard BA and things like that don't hit this Wix, this GDI issue. Um, so I'm hoping that this can narrow it down even further and the Windows guys will be like, oh, fonts, yeah, here's the fix. Um, someone pointed out that there are other security fixes to font stuff that they keep trying to fix, and it's interesting. So apparently fonts are fraught with peril or something like that. So uh, we will have this bullet point next week if we don't have some discussion on Wix devs. And in the meantime, when we get some workaround or something from, should we get something from uh, Microsoft on this issue? All right, so that's where we're at for this for right now. Triage? Yes, ready? Is that a question? Sorry, I don't know. Um, I'm supposed to say no label not is open. No 
Label. Seven open, three closed. Ooh, okay. Um, oh, I've lost the mouse cursor. Great. i got to figure out how to do this without a mouse cursor. Uh, all right. Anyway, Wix 4X compile error. This is the one we had last week. Need more detail. Um, yeah, it's been like three weeks now. I think it's I, time to close it yep, and I'm say reopen if uh, when you have more you provide more detail. Yep. Yes. Error during installation. Oh, my goodness. This is way harder than tiny bugs. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do tabs. Some error during installation. Verbose log, log yada, yada, yada. Um, same thing? It's been two weeks. Yeah. So same thing, close it, and have them reopen it when they give us a log? Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Two weeks. I mean, I think two weeks is reasonable. And it's not like, you know, they can reopen it. Anyone who opened the bug can reopen it, so. Yeah, and and we should, yeah, and we'll try to get a comment on it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to keep tabs on them and mark them. So, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, found in both 3, 4... Oh, yeah, same defendant. So Blair has done the work, which was pretty cool, to go and narrow down exactly the uh, reference assemblies we need to get Votive working. And this gets rid of a bunch of warnings from Votive, which was pretty nice. Um, with the I think theory you, that, you merged both of these, right? Yes, and this is closed because both okay. of these fixes. Uh, the Wix 4 change had been in for a long time. After the release of Wix 3.10.2, the gates opened for 3.11, and so I went through in a backlog and sucked up a bunch of 3.11 stuff that was already in there. And by closing the 3.11 or the, the 3 bug, that allowed this thing to be closed completely because there's a fix for both. Yay! Oh, this is not great. It doesn't remember my location of my my cursor. All right. Well, this is not as good as tiny bugs. Okay. Property related crash when loading Wix in Visual Studio. Yeah, I thought for sure that this was a duplicate. I found something similar um, in another bug, an older bug. Yeah, well, it's Odif. Sounds good. Someone could fix this in 3x. Hopefully, it would be not a breaking change. So, yeah, totally. That works. Go look at it. It's Votive and Heat all together. All right, let's try to do the mouse cursor. All right, unable to cast this to that. Uh, another votive issue. Yeah. This so one, I thought for everybody. sure we had yeah. a duplicate. Um, wow. Well, I, I couldn't. I couldn't find an exact duplicate. There, are, there are some that are similar. Um, and I suspect it's not. You know. Like it fails completely, it's more when I have this other type of project loaded in my solution. Yeah. All right. Well, votive and yeah, might need more information to have someone hunt that down. Um, multi instance attribute to major upgrade element. Yeah. So there is the desire here to allow multiple instances to be independent upgrades of each other. Which I think makes sense. I think that makes sense. You're basically saying, I can install this thing many times, and when I upgrade them, I each of them in upgrade separately. Is well, that each upgrade separately, or one upgrade is going to upgrade all the instances? Well, today I think you get a single upgrade code, which means yeah. that the next install nukes all your previous instances, I think. Um, so this would be the ability so that you could have each instance being able to upgrade it independently. So I guess it makes sense. Uh, someone could do that. And I think it's additive, so it probably could be done in 3x if they wanted to. Or we could say it's big enough and toss it in 4. I'm I'm ambivalent. Um, yeah, I think I think there's there's going to be there's going to be language changes and some runtime support, right? Mm, I kind of yeah. want to say this is bigger. It is bigger. 
I'm fine. It's a feature, so I'm fine if we want to toss it four. So. So yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna vote four. Four. Fine. That's my vote. Yep. All right. Four and uh, candle light. The whole tooling has to be updated to support that. Right. Problem with VS 2013 and 3.8. Force create on install. Um, uh, yeah, this is, sounds like a better thing to go send to Wix users. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, wait. And I've tested it seems to work. Yeah, right. Well, and and why is he doing force create on install and force delete on uninstall? But I don't know. Maybe that's what they really want. Yeah. So anyway, probably that sixteen oh six is familiar. Oh, Phil has some page that may or may not be interesting for that. Oh man, I totally lost my cursor and. All of everything. <laughs> uh, wow, some corruption of things. Maybe okay. Anyway, uh, how about we send this guy back to Wix users until we find out if it's a really a bug or not? Yep, that works. Support something other. Three ten two will not install on latest through with Windows ten. Uh, log file. Yeah. So we need to get a link to the log file and the UI. Someone want to do that? <laughs> I don't want to go spin up, but we really should do that. It just cut. It would cut down on these things. Um, no, this is Wix UI itself. Jacob. Oh, BA. Sorry, Wix BA. Yeah, right. Wix BA itself. Yeah, it'd be nice if it when it failed, if it would say, and click here to get your log file. Um, anyway, so in the end, it looks like this guy had some other MSI installs running, so he did a restart and everything started working, so yay for that. Um, the file element contains unexpected attribute source. This was fun. Um, I'm curious what Wixedit is doing, if it's adding as attributes with the lowercase source, because that doesn't work, um, but it is capital source. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I haven't kept up with whether Wix edit is being maintained for it's not just three X's. Long. No, but still, it wasn't that long ago. But anyway, uh, turns out I, this is probably the issue, and he's got it fixed. So carry on. And here's our layout directory broken with clean room implementation. Um, so yeah, we should probably take this. We'll also need a fix for four, but we can cherry pick the change over once we get it in three. Um, so I'm inclined we take this in three, 11 now, and four now as soon as possible. Um, and then do we leave this issue open or do we create a new issue? What do we want to do with if we want to keep it around for a 3.10.3 release. Are we doing a 3.10.3 release, I guess? I guess we're going to, no matter what, with this layout fix, um, with, it, with or without the GDI fix, or with hopefully with a GDI workaround at some point in the future. Sorry, say that again. I'm not Sorry. understanding English. I went around the whole way. So. We take this fix. Should we leave this bug open and put it in a 3.10.3 milestone? Well, first of all, we're going to need two bugs because, as you might notice, you can't assign a bug to multiple milestones. Yeah. Which is kind of annoying. Um, so, truthfully, I, I, I don't care. I mean, that sounds... All right, we'll just leave it open, and if it gets closed, we'll open it again to say, hey, 3.10.3, and then we'll just get this long-running history of everything in it. Yeah, I think it's fine. You know, we can 
So we'll just have to keep making sure it keeps open. staying open. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then we're done. Yay, triage. Which means we're going to do a pull request. Anyone want to guess the pull request I picked for this week? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Paul Ionic Security has a question. Um, yeah, is it about triage or about pull requests? Yes, okay. Oh, is there another bug? Triage. Ah, there must be another bug. What bug are we looking at? I'm guessing it's another bug. 3746. Wix BA should support same version upgrades. Yeah, this has been a feature request for a while. Yeah. And in 4, I think we're going to change the default burn behavior, I think. And then, yeah, so... Yeah, we can unmute you and then temporarily, if that will help. Okay, Paul, yes, welcome, first time. Hey! Do you have a mic? You should be able to speak now. Wait for it. Wait for it. All right, we may have to go back to typing. Oh, he just muted himself back. I don't think you'll be able to unmute yourself. I'll try it one more time. All right. Yeah? Do, do, do. Anyway, same version upgrades. Yeah, this is a thing. Yeah, not unusual to have problems. I remember way back at the very beginning, we had a meeting where it was just join and check to make sure all your stuff happens. We have online and offline installers. Yeah, and you've built them from the same code. Should make sure that if they have a provider key authored, it gets changed. I don't know what gets changed means. Uh, well, if you have the provider key and you keep it the same, then that's that means each gets the same bundle ID. And then you change them only you know when you bump version numbers. Do I don't know that we actually set the bundle ID to the provider key, do we? Mm, pretty sure. Uh, don't think so. I think it overrides the default. Hmm. Okay. That's, my memory is fuzzy there then. The version and the upgrade codes are all the same. Right, so so same upgrade code, same version. The default behaviors have them all installed side by side, which is the same default behavior for MSI. So, and it is possible for a BA to override the default behavior of when it gets same, it could say change the... Um, Um, well, you could specify the product. Yeah, but you don't need to specify the product ID here. Right, and in fact, the only way it works with MSIs is if in major upgrade element speak, you say allow same version upgrades. It's not a default behavior. Right. Same with burn. It's just that with MSI, there are built-in alternatives. I'm just saying that people have appended the version, but that would be the fix if they want the same version upgrade. Yeah, I, I don't... The, the question here is... 
I mean, at a certain level, your your web you have web and offline installers, and you've built them both, but they're unique. And so, I guess the the trick here is that you want them one to block the other to say you already have the web or the offline installer and not allow it to install again, or something to that effect. Right? I mean. Or the opposite, they should be able to upgrade over each other. Or they could upgrade over, well, right. And so the default behavior, if you have the same version and the same upgrade code, is that they all install side by side, right? And you can totally argue that that's kind of a weird behavior, but it's the same behavior that Windows installer has if you have the same product code and the same upgrade code, or differing um, product codes. And burn doesn't support minor upgrades at all. Like that's So that would, would be the... If you want to keep the same product code in MSI, you have to go to minor upgrades, and Burn doesn't support minor upgrades. For so, bundles. For bundles, sorry. For, yeah. Bundles don't do minor upgrades. Like They just don't. Um, they behave like major upgrades. So exposing the product code and using the same product code to do all that doesn't make sense. The trick here is... Um, so in... And here, it sounds like you want to create a relationship between all of your products um, at the same version and have some user experience when you find something at the same version. Um, now, the way this typically happens for people where they complain about the current behavior is that they do a build on their dev machine, then they do another build on their dev machine. They don't change the version number, and they want the install to remove the old old version, the previously built version, basically by time, you know, whichever, with the new one. So the idea there is, hey, if it's the same version, just uninstall the old one and install the new one. So you do a whole new thing. Um, so you know, if you want to have a web and an offline installer, like in Burn, you can specify, and this is what Heath is hitting at, that you can specify the layout such that uh, all your files are on the internet, and if they want one for their network, they just do a slash layout switch, which we know is broken 3.10.2 if they specify it, but that's the whole <laughs> purpose of it, to create a local image that they can then distribute everywhere. So you don't have to build two different bundles. You build one bundle, and you just take the XC and put it on the internet with all the download links, and then when someone wants the you know CD version, they just do a slash layout, or you ship them a CD. I don't know if people still do that. Well, and that. also... Can't can't you build once with all of the files locally? Build your bundle once, and then create different distributions essentially. Right. I mean, that's essentially what I'm saying. Is you take DXE and you put it on the internet with all its pieces, and then you ship the one on the CD. Right. I'm, but I'm saying you don't have to use slash layout to do that. You can build it once with the files. Correct. That's and correct. And then just ship. One person gets just the XE on the internet, and the CDs are burned. CDs. <laughs> CDs are burned from that the, the initial build. So anyway, I mean, if you don't want to do that's the way it was. That's the easy way. The way it was intended. You just build once, and then you ship the thing wherever you want. If you want to do something where you want to have lots of different bundles all the same version, you can do that through a related bundle. But you're going to need to handle the related bundle callback in a way that makes sense for what happens when you have all these of the same. Um, same upgrade code, you know, and you could tag them independently. You could tag one as the online, and the, the tag another one as offline. The tag would different. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could solve this problem uh, with your webs and offline installers. But just saying you want same version upgrades isn't going to get you the behavior you want. I don't think. Instead, what you're going to get is if they get the web installer and then they get the offline installer, and they install either the web or the offline installer. Same version upgrade means the second one upgrades the previous one, which means they'll go through a whole installation experience and install it. So um, anyway, it's so I there are different ways of solving this, but I don't think that uh, I don't think same version upgrade is really the thing you want here, at least from what I've understood you described so far. So now that said... Although at the end of the day, I think we, we agree that this should work. It, this should be at least an option, if not the default behavior. So in Wix 4, so we're not changing in Wix 3 because, well, yeah, yeah. break people. In Wix right. 4, I, I think we're going to do the work both for major upgrade and for uh, burn to switch the default such that basically allow same version upgrades is the default. Because so far, 
the current behavior is never what anybody expects. <laughs> so we're going to switch to the behavior that everybody expects, which would be if you install this and then you install something in the same version, it would upgrade it. So how is maintenance mode triggered? Then? Maintenance mode is triggered as long as you don't rebuild with a new product code, I mean with the new package code. Bundle ID? It would act like modifier or parent on its Yeah, so the problem is that those aren't the same bundles, so you'll have to do something to make that happen. I mean, there's nothing about those two bundles that are, they're completely different builds, they have different hashes, all kinds of things. They're not the same build. So to do that, you'd you'd have to go, oh, hey, I'm running this bundle. Oh, look, we found that there's another one already on the machine that has the same version. Launch that instead of me, which you can do, uh, but you have to manually do the work to find those things. Um, if you just went back and built one bundle and shipped it as both the web and the offline installer, then you it, Burn will do all that work for you. So, th so the behavior in 4 is to change the default such that if you install a bundle with the same version, it will remove the previous, it'll, it'll basically do a major upgrade. And the reason you do that, uh, the reason we're thinking about doing that is because that more matches what developers expect off of their own machines. Like the dev scenario works better that way. Because right now what you get is multiple of the same bundles in ARP and it's really confusing. <laughs> It, and it it's, it's only makes shipping the same product the same version only makes sense from a developer scenario where it's like on their dev box and they're doing many builds in one day. Shipping the same bundle the same version and shipping it to customers is just or shipping different bundles the same version to customers creates kind of craziness out there. Ref counting, yeah. I mean, there's there's weird things can happen doing that, but. Major upgrades should work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll see how well it works, but that seems to be more what people expect. And it's kind of hard to defend yeah. the and it's hard to defend the current behavior of hey, yeah, you installed it. Here's another version. You're like, well, why did I get two in ARP? Like, when is that ever useful? Same version, I get two of them. Well, yeah, that's kind of true. That's kind and of it's true. essentially a no-op because the previous bundle has already installed all the packages. Yeah. So Unless you've changed your authoring. Right. <laughs> anyway, it's which gets confusing. The, it's all confusing because you get two things in ARP and you can't differentiate them. <laughs> right. Except by installed yeah, on date. <laughs> and if you install them on the same date. Yeah, oh, that's right. It's not even time. So anyway, no. the, whole, the whole thing just is like, bah. And again, and, remember, the BA can do this. The BA can say, that's right. I found a related bundle. The version's the same. Uh, upgrade it. Yeah. Or you can do that today. And all we're talking about is changing the default. Well, he can't go into maintenance mode because it's not the same bundle, right? And have MSI's, an and MSI's behavior is to install it again too. If you change no, the product code a, and you have the same version and you have a new package package code, it'll install two versions of the same MSI. Isn't that the another version of this product is installed? Not if you. Uh, the version's the same. I think that's the behavior. Identical versions, different product codes, because that that would be a minor upgrade. Oh no, it wouldn't. What no, is? it's a major upgrade. It's it's a completely separate product. It just has right, to have the right, same right. upgrade. And the only way that it will fail is if major upgrade has a check for same versions and calls that a failure, which I don't think it does. I think it leaves it out. I th no, that I was my memory. I don't even think it gets that far. I think that's okay. the scenario where you get another version is is installed. No. No, because there's nothing in related products. So you have a new product code, a new package code in this new MSI. It's a whole new MSI. It happens to have an upgrade code that sh it shares with another MSI, but that's only managed through removing existing products and find related no, products. No, you're right. You're right. So no, unless the, the major code upgrade code has an error that says, including myself, then error. And my, what I, my memory, which could be wrong, but my memory is that we leave that itself out of 
the major upgrade logic, which means it starts up, it goes, hey, look, I'm all new. Oh, yes, I found a related thing, but he has the same version. That's not hitting my upgrade version table or my upgrade table. I'll just install my new Messiah. So you get another Messiah inside your um, ARB. And you're like, oh, well, that's not what I wanted. Well, burn behavior is exactly the same. And you could go, well, that's not what I wanted. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably not what you wanted. It's kind of hard behavior to defend. All right. So all this is allow same version upgrades, none of which I think is actually what Paul wants. I think he wants something more like he wants to build once and then ship both the web and the offline installs at the same time from the same bundle. And that certainly, uh, that will work much better everywhere, which is, you know, you can see Visual Studio does that today. Cool. John, can I get a yay? <laughs> <laughs> Go team. <laughs> anyway, yeah, all right. Oh, this is the fun of identity, right? And MSI, for a long time, I always like, they have too many identities. But in the end, when you get down to it and you lay out all of the identities they have, the package code, the product code, and the upgrade code, you actually do need all of those identities if you want to allow for all of the flexibility that they allow. Now, you could argue that all the flexibility they allow is kind of crazy, and they shouldn't, but that's different different problem. And burn shows a simpler path by not allowing minor upgrades, which means we don't have the concept of product code. Burn has a concept of package code and an upgrade code. So much stuff. Component GUI and key path are completely separate problems. All right. So that's triage back to PR, I think. Files change, three. Two changes, one to add the history and one to pick up a... No problem, Paul. At this point, I toss in a pitch of, this is what we do at Fire Giant all day, so <laughs> less for the people here, because you guys on the bench know this stuff real well, but all the other people in the world are like, what just happened? Yeah, this is what we do all day at Fire Giant, answering people's questions like this so that they can build the best MSIs in the world. All right, my advertising is over. I need to get that on my system. All right. So, um, I've seen people starting to do this multi-line um, thing in our markdown. I think Bob started it. Um, I'm fine with it. Yay. We should um, make sure that this actually is going to render, since we're using common mark now, and make sure that there's enough space here such that these actually end up being sub-bullets under this and not more bullets next to it. Uh, which is fair. Yeah, yeah. So, if we're going to start doing this, we need to maybe get some guidance out there to help people do that. I think... This is enough, but we need to go look at the feed. The easiest way, we'll, after we do this build, go look at the feed and make sure this renders correctly as a sub-bulleted list. The, the advantage, in case you're curious, of using the sub-bullets is that this fits the whole GitHub commit message concepts a little better. Yeah, you the have title. The, the short and then, thing, and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not against it. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, no, it, it's probably a really good thing. Ah, oh, it's probably a good thing. All right, so we have to pass the variables down because we need to get the new bundle source path. Um, um, Jacob, I copy this pattern. Yeah, no, I'm I'm all for copying existing pattern. We just need to make sure that the existing pattern works because we're not using a markdown parser anymore. We're using a common mark parser, and they're a little bit more strict about these nested bullets. And the only reason I know this is because it bit me in my blog update. I have a new blog theme and all that, and it bit me in there, so that's why I'm sensitive to it. So um, we'll go figure out what the right pattern is and maybe add it to the readme in here so people can follow it if they want to use this. All right, cool. Continuing on. So we need to pass the variables down because we're going to ask for them in layout bundle now. All right, this is the header. This is the call down. Here's the layout bundle. Get the source path. And if it's equivalent to the destination path, skip it. And this handles the file and use problem that you would have if you said do a slash layout. So you're in the clean room. Sorry. You launch from the untrusted location. It put you in the clean room. When you do a slash layout, you want to put all the files laid out in the untrusted location. So in doing so, the 
clean room would attempt to say, hey, can I put this file here? It would say, yeah, that's not the same path that I'm running myself, but it turns out it is the path that's started the clean room, the untrusted process. So it has to skip that as well. So this variable will not always be defined. So if you were to do a slash layout from package cache, there's a chance this could crash or otherwise do something weird. Yeah. Would this come back? No, it would fail. And it would say fail to get path for burn bun somebody. So this may come back and f this could fail if you're not running in uh, clay. How do you do a layout from the cache? Well, I'm not saying you could. I'm just saying that if burn source, you can get to a place where a burn source path is not set and you could hit this. So when I we do a layout, we don't rewrite the bundle. So why is styles and use a problem? Because if you do a slash layout without a path, it's going to lay it out to where the in the untrusted location. Right. right. And the untrusted location has a file running that is the untrusted process. So if you attempt to lay out the bundle itself, because the layout the bundle gets copied to that wherever you put it. Oh oh oh! I thought it has really? to copy the execute. Well, yeah. So if you did, you know, uh, bundle.exe layout to path on network share, the bundle X oh, 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 to the network yeah, share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Cause the, the, but it's always identical. Yeah, it's the same file. It's just if you happen to write it over the thing that's running, you're not going to get very far. Right. Layout's going to fail and say, I can't copy this file. Ah! Yeah, I'm curious why we would do that. Why would we copy it on top of ourselves? Yeah. Well, that's what this code is trying to prevent. It's trying to prevent us from copying on top of the untrusted process that's still running because we're doing the layout from the clean room guy and he's now going to write out to the untrusted location which is where slash layout thinks it should go so he needs to make sure he doesn't stomp on top of sorry is this function just copying the bundle uh, this is probably part of it there's probably more parts of it that they copy the rest of the payloads too but yeah well, that, so that's no my... no this is just the exe you're right this is just the exe okay okay so in this case we're, we are just skipping it we're exiting early with that's okay, and yeah, we totally skip because we're basically on. saying, "Oh, that's me. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to copy myself." But we do continue laying out the rest of the payloads. Correct. Okay. Okay. So this code needs to handle the case where there is no source path, and yeah, just make sure it's not copy on top. So I think that's one change. All right. Let's turn that into a comment. Oh, please. Oh, come on. I'm signed in. Can I please leave a comment? This is what I get for trying to go back to IE because I didn't have a chance to test it inside Skype. <sighs> All right. I'll add a comment later. Um, this function needs to be a little bit, a little bit, more. All right. Otherwise, we attempt to get the layout directory. If that's not set, we attempt to get the bundle source path. If that's not set, then we just use the executable path, which is the right way. Basically, we, we need to insert this source path. If he's present, then do layout to the current location of the executable. That's the default. So I think that's it. I think that's the one change. That line that I can't add. That basically says we need to handle when this is E not found. Not likely to happen, but we need to handle it. The one way I know you could get into it is if you did a layout from the package cache, which would be very weird. So. Uh, Jacob has the PR in the pull, so... Um, I don't know, I'd have to look at the whole code. I don't know what the rest of this function is doing, and this isn't expanding for me right now. So, I think GitHub is like giving up on IE. That's my only guess. All right, so that's the thing. Um, all right, cool. 
other things questions comments other things people want to go talk about do otherwise think about I would like to get out of the hell that is this security release thing but it doesn't seem to want to let go um, but anyway we'll get somewhere um, anything it's already been 45 minutes 50 minutes oh, no we started a little late so where's my recording thingy there it is 50 minutes almost 50 minutes all right these security things are adding the other half hour to our meeting, I think. Eventually we'll get back to a half hour is my hope. So, all right. All right, good. Thanks, John. Good to know that overall it's working except for the layout thing. All right. Well, given that, I think we're done. We will call it a day. Until next week, hopefully we'll have good news about the security update from the Windows people so they can tell us some workaround. Um, and we'll keep keep on keeping on. Um, by the way, uh, 4 is out there, so get in 4 start doing good stuff. I just uh, sent last night, and the work I was doing with Git found a perf problem, and man, really sped up inline directory syntax processing. So anyway, uh, until next week, you guys take it easy. Bye. <laughs>